Today, we are going to make our own custom header using Elementor Pro. Now this isn't hard to do at all, and it's actually pretty quick to set up. So let's get started. Here in the back end, once we have Elementor Pro installed and activated, we're gonna head over to the Templates tab. We're gonna go to Theme Builder. Once this loads up, we are going to select a header. On the top right hand side, there is Add New. We're gonna click on that. Now it's gonna load up Elementor. Now it gives us this option within the library to select pre-made ones. If you want to have one of these, go ahead and just choose one. Um, for us, we're gonna make one from scratch. So we're gonna close this window. And now we have a blank canvas that we're gonna start on. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our own section. So we click the plus, we say the section. Now for the section settings, I want this to be full width, no gap, and I want the stretch. I want it to go across the whole top of the website. Now, if I wanted to add more columns, I right click in the open space and I can say add new column. Now, do want more than one column. I'm going to have a column for the site logo. I'm going to have one also for the navigation. Now, I want these things separate because when we go into mobile view, I'd like to have control on how things would collapse or stay in place. So, we're going to keep everything separate in its own column. Now, if this was an e-commerce website, we'd have a third column as well so that we can keep the cart in that container. So let's finalize the settings of this section quickly. We're going to hover over the section. We're going to click on the six dots. Now we make sure that we are on the settings of the section. So again, we're going to have the column width set to full, no gap for the column gaps, and we're going to have it stretched. I want no gap so that I can control properly how much space to allow for my header. Then for the height, I'm going to say min height, of say 60 pixels the HTML tag I'm going to put this to a header you don't have to do that but this is good practice then in the style I'm going to make sure that the background stays white I want the background actually set as a color so when we scroll down with the header nothing will interfere or overlap now that we have the color of the background we're going to click onto border we're going to add a little bit of a shadow just to add a little bit of pop away from the rest of the website then we're going to click on advanced I'm going to say motion effects and then this section where it says sticky I want this to stick to the top and I want this to happen on all the different breakpoints that we have for the website which is the desktop, the tablet and the mobile I'm also going to add an entrance animation I want this to fade down every time a new page loads now obviously you don't have to do any of these designs this is just a header that I'd like to make that I generally make for a website because it's the style that I like so now that we're happy with the settings of this section Let's edit the column widths. So to do that, we hover in between the columns. So you can see that the mouse changed to drag icon. I'm going to drag this to the left to about 20% to the column on the left. Now I let go. And I'm going to click on this nine dot icon. I'm going to add the site logo to the first column. And as you can see on this example website, the site logo hasn't been loaded yet. And that's fine. And we can load that up after we've done the header. So for the image size, I want to keep this smaller than the height of the actual header. So to make sure that the image doesn't stretch out the header height, I'm going to click on custom for the image size. Over here, I'm going to put the height of 55 pixels. I'm going to click 55. I'm going to say apply. I'm going to have this centrally aligned. And there we go. No matter what the size of the header, it's always going to stay 55 pixels max. So the next thing we need is the menu. We're going to click on the nine dot icon. We're going to find the nav menu. Now if you have other add-ons, you can select their navigation menu instead. But for this example, we're just going to use the standard ones that Elementor gives us. So we click on nav menu and we're going to drag it into the second column. And we let go there. Now we can change the settings for this widget. For this example, I want the menu on the right hand side. But you can see it goes way too much on the right, which is perfect because I said no gaps for the column. Now if we carry on down on the settings, I want the mobile drop down to be a full width. So when they click the icon of the navigation menu in the mobile phone, then the menu will just make sure that it's full width when it drops down to show all the different options that they can choose from. Now we're going to head into the style of this navigation menu. The text color, I want this to be a little bit darker. The hover cover, I'm going to keep to the accent. So as you can see, when we hover over the items of the menu, that's the color that's going to be represented. As well as an active, I would also want the same thing to apply. So I want it to be the accent. So then you know which page you're on. Now we're going to click onto the drop down. Now the background, we also want this white. And then everything else we can keep the same as the main menu. Now we head into the settings of the toggle button. 
I want the color to be a very dark charcoal and I want the background to be white like the rest. The default colors of this I don't really like that so I'm actually setting it here. And we also have the options to change its size and everything else but that I'm going to keep as standard we don't have to worry about it. Now the last thing that we have to do, now remember I said there was no gap in this column so we're going to click on advanced, I'm going to uncheck the linking and then the settings for the right hand side I'm going to put in a 15 pixel. So it's just a little bit of a bump on the right hand side just to move it away and we're not going to change any other sides of this widget. So now that we're happy with our header, the final thing we have to do is make sure that this is fine to the way that we want it in mobile view. So next to the green publish button at the left hand side at the bottom of the screen, there's a responsive mode icon and we're going to click on that. So and that's the laptop and the mobile phone looking icon. And you can see on the top here we can select which view we'd like to see. So now we're going to click on mobile. What it's showing us is that the logo is going to be on the top and the menu is going to be underneath it. Now this is standard behavior for columns, but for the header, I don't want this. I want them to be side by side. So I'm gonna click on the icon for the column, and you can see on the settings on the left hand side, the column width is default 400, but it doesn't actually have a value. For this, I want this to be 50. And you can see now that the column is only 50% of the width. Now I'm gonna click on the icon for the second column, and I want the width of this to be 50 as well. Now you can see that the menu and the logo are side by side in the mobile view. Now that we're completely satisfied with the way that our header looks like, now we can publish this for our entire site. So we're going to click on publish, it's going to show us the publish settings, we're going to say add condition, and then we're going to say the include for the entire site. And then we're going to say save and close. And that's it, that's a header. So if we reload the front end now you can see how the header comes in on every page. So we can click on about, now you can see how the header fades in. Now you can see that the logo is set to a default image and we don't want that. Let's put in the logo for this website. So in order to load up the logo, we have to go into our dashboard again. So let's do that. Let's go into our dashboard. So one of the ways that we can load up a logo is we can hover over appearance and then click on customize. And it'll load up the default customizer of WordPress. Over here, we're going to click on site identity and we can select our logo. Let's say skip cropping. And while we're here, we can add it for our site icon. Once we've loaded up a logo, we just hit publish. And there we go. So now let's re reload our front end. And as you can see, there's our logo. There's our navigation. And if we click on each page, there it loads up. Now I'm sure you remember that we made this whole header sticky to the top when you scroll down the page. So now you can see that happening in action. And you can also see that because we set the background to white, nothing overlaps with each other. It does as intended. And the background shadow that I added just adds that depth so that you can see that this is part of the header and the rest is just the page. And now if we go into a mobile view, let's do that quickly you can see that our mobile header works just fine as well and it does the whole thing with the 50 50. now in mobile view if you don't want the percentages to be 50 50 split for the columns then just change it to whatever you'd like just make sure that the whole entirety of the columns added together equals to the 100 percent if it does overlap then just put everything down to a total of 99 percent just to be safe okay and that was how to make a header on your website using elementor pro on the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a header without using Elementor Pro. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please send a comment below. I'll do my best to respond to you as quickly as possible. And like I said near the beginning, if you're doing an e-commerce website, all you have to do is do the same principles like we did in this example and just add a third column. Then in mobile view, all you're doing is changing the column width between three columns instead of two to add to a total of 100%. And again, if the columns for some reason are stacking underneath each other at 100%, just make the total combined width 99% and you should be okay. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.